Now, what's this? What is this? We've actually looked at something like this earlier when we were talking about uh, x, sine x, and tan x and how they converge at the origin. Do you remember that? You had this business of these two, uh, this two-sided inequality here, right? Or three-sided? Whatever. Do you remember what it was called? It was called the squeeze law, right? So it's where you've got this unknown quantity, right? You've got it in the middle there. But if you can work out something that's below it and something that's above it, and then you can get those two things to get quite close to each other, they squeeze the thing in the middle to some defined value, some well-defined value, okay? So, how's this gonna work? Well, you can hopefully see what I was doing as I was trying to explain, this is why your diagram is so vitally important. What's getting squeezed? What's getting squeezed? It's the area underneath cos x in here. Right? It's being squeezed between the top trapezium from the tangent and the bottom trapezium, which is what you would get if you did trapezoidal rule, okay? Because that's area beneath the curve, okay? So that's where this is going to form from, right? So to answer this question, part D, let's start with one side. Let's talk about um, well, we have an expression for the area underneath the curve, right? How do I get the precise area underneath? I form an integral, right? What kind of integral should I form? Part 6 to pi on 3 of, because that is just cos, right? And I do it with respect to x. That ought to give me the exact area. What is it? Cos goes into sine, doesn't it? Not negative sine, be careful. We're integrating, not differentiating, okay? So therefore, Definite integral, sine pi on 3 minus sine pi on 6. Right? Okay, what's this? Root 3 on 2. What's this? A half. Okay, so now, have a look at that. Have a think. How are we going to use this result to get toward this? Right? Well, you see this root 3 minus 1, right? Clearly that's going to be important. We need that there. What kind of inequality should I form, which is going to get me from this and this into that? What would you write? There's a couple of different places you could start that would both be valid. Okay, the area of A, B, D, C. Which one's that? That's the one underneath, isn't it? So it's less than this integral, isn't it? Uh, this. Okay. I would say from the graph. Or if you want to be um, fancy and sound like an extension 2 student, you can say by inspection. I love, I, love it, I love it when 40 students write by inspection when they're like, I don't know why this is. I'll just say by inspection. It's sort of like a, a catch all. For anyway, okay. So there's my. Um, you're like, oh no, he knows our secret. We've been doing it for years. There's the um, ABDC. Pi on 24, root 3 plus 1 um, is less than root 3 minus 1 over 2. Okay, now have a look at it. What am I going to do with this thing? Obviously, it has most of the right pieces in it, okay, like this root 3 minus 1, okay. But you can simplify it a variety of different ways. What should you do? What should you do to it? And how could you tell what you should do to it? You have a look carefully at what you're being asked to prove, right? Whenever you're asked to prove something, pay very, very close attention to it because that'll guide the steps that you do. You're not just simplifying in any random direction. You're getting towards that, right? So what direction should I go in? I, I, I want to make pi the subject, don't I? Okay, because pi is the subject of this inequality, right? So therefore, here, I just have to divide both sides by root 3 plus 1 and multiply by 3 and 4. Is that okay? That'll give me pi on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. When you multiply by 24, you get a 12 up to 12, right? There's also root 3 minus 1. And what did I say? I divided by root 3 plus 1, okay? But that's a bit awkward, isn't it? We can rationalize that. So you rationalize by multiplying by the conjugate. Don't you? Okay. Now I just run out of space down here. 
but you guys can see what's going on. When you multiply by the conjugate, which happens to be this, this will get squared. What happens to the denominator? It becomes 3 minus 1, difference of squares, which is 2. And of course, 12 divided by 2, which looks very encouraging when you think about what we're asked to prove. Okay? So now you can tell me what I should do on the other side. What should I write? From the graph, what inequality? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the integral and then I'll and then I'll put down the actual value. So the integral from pi and six to pi and three of cos x, right? That that precise area underneath the curve. Um, sorry, that's not equal to. It's less than the bigger trapezium. C M N D. Okay, now I'll sub in my value. Root three minus one on two. Less than that mess there. Uh, pi root two on twelve. What did I want again? I wanted pi being the subject, right? So I'll get these two guys over the other side. That 12 would go over and become a 6 again, right? The root 2 will go down the bottom. But again, I should rationalize, shouldn't I? Right? Did I get it right? No, wait, something's wrong? No, hold on. Did I lose a 2? What happened? Oh, I just have an... Um, Oh, that's right, of course. 6 divided by root 2, this is, um, this is 3 times 2, isn't it? So 2 divided by root 2, sorry, there's the pi over there. 2 divided by root 2 is just root 2. 3 root 2 is less than pi. Okay. So maybe if I wrote it round the other way, it would be helpful. Pi is bigger than 3 root 2, root 3 minus 1. Okay. So now I have my squeeze law situation, right? Pi, whatever it is, got to be below this, got to be above this, okay? Now, just so it turns out, then when you actually chuck these into your calculator, which I went and did, okay, what you get for these values are, well, actually, I should get the real numbers, you get 3.1058 and so on, and 3.21 and so on, okay? Then you're like, that's not that good. Like, I think maybe measuring a circle would be better, right? Um, because they're quite far apart, but let's just pause for a second. Why are the numbers far apart? Okay, relatively speaking. Um, well, they're far apart because of the values that we chose here, right? We're constrained between these two trapeziums, but you can actually see what the error is. How would I go about making the error smaller? You'd narrow in the trapezium, wouldn't you? Because then these gaps, they get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Why did they give you pi on 6 and pi on 3? because you can handle the numbers. <laughs> they give you something nice and neat, right? But if we picked, you know, whatever is really to close to the left of pi and four and whatever close to the right, you'd, get, you'd start to squeeze this thing in and you would get some accurate approximations. Okay. So I really like this. Where are the circles? Um, well, there's, you know, there's none geometrically, but the, where, the place where the circles are hiding is in the causes and the signs, right? Because the cause and the sign, are the, that's where the, they're the coordinates of the unit circle, right? So circles are there, that's why pi's there, right? But it's, um, it's a clever way to see it, so I, that's why I really like this question.